Sometimes it's an accident that like triggers an idea. Just could go like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then we'll j let's listen what that sounds like. Oh, that's a little bit longer. I'm sorry. My name is Jojo Mayer, I'm 53,000 years old. I was born originally in Zurich, Switzerland, and I've been living in many different places in the world, but I've been living in New York City for the past 27 years. Well, my current band uh, is, is Nerve, which is my own band. I play guitar, I play the bass, uh, I play keyboards, and uh, I sing. Uh, I am endorsed by Solo Drums, Sabian Cymbals, Big First Drumsticks, Evans Drum Heads, and my mom. Ringo. I believe the first time I saw a drummer play the drums. That's more, maybe I was like 18 months old, something like that. I'm self taught. Well, I love to be a musician and uh, the drums comes the easiest to me, it's the most natural because I've been doing it for a very long time. So um, I, I can play other instruments, but on the drums I can really express myself more authentically. I can't really remember. I grew up with many, many records of my, my dad, so I can't really remember what the first record was that I actually spent money on. I can't remember, because it, what was the last record? Oh, maybe, maybe Kendrick Lamar's record, or, or, uh, or James Blake's, the last one. Oh, uh, many. Yeah, but, I mean, the life changes were really more life things that I, that I experienced or that I witnessed, you know. I mean, most definitely, like, seeing Tony Williams play for the first time when I was a teenager. That probably had the most drastic impact on my life as a drummer uh, other than the day I was born or the day I will die. <laughs> I learned a lot from, from Tony Williams. I learned a lot from Louis Armstrong. I learned a lot from from Gustav Mahler, I, I learned a lot from Stravinsky, I, I learned a lot from Hendrix, I learned a lot from the Beatles, I learned a lot from James Brown, I learned a lot from Aretha Franklin, I, I learned a lot from Led Zeppelin, I, I learned a lot from Pink Floyd, I learned a lot from Brian Eno, I learned a lot from Steve Reich. I learned a lot from Body Rich. I, I learned a lot from Weather Report. I learned a lot from the police. I learned a lot <clears throat> from uh, my sister. I learned a lot from my friends. I learned a lot from Aphex Twin. I learned a lot from Fotec. I learned a lot from James Blake. I learned a lot from, uh, I got a few more. I get inspiration from life in general. I get inspired by uh, by bi biographies, by by people that I admire, by finding out how they manage to become the people that they that uh, they became that are impressive to me or that I admire. That that uh, biography inspires me. Right now, I'm working on uh, 
a new record with Nerve. Uh, I'm working on an art project for next year. I cannot really talk about it yet, but it's uh, something big. I just finished uh, shooting a movie as an, as an actor, not as a drummer. I mean, I, 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 I am a drummer in the movie, but I'm, a, I'm an actor uh, in that movie. And uh, these are the, the few things just happening just right now. I think my strength is that I have a unique vision and uh, that I'm a reactive person, that I have the sensitivity to, to locate and feel things before other people do. Well, I pretty much have it already, yeah. I pretty much also have it. I have some hobbies. Uh, I like conjuring and magic, but uh, I uh, I love traveling. I, I love food. I uh, I love to hang out with my friends. Uh, and I do the usual things. I I'm interested in art. Uh, I like movies. Just basic things too. Yes, I think so. Um, curiosity and gratitude, and courage, and compassion, and humor. Um, so, okay, for those of you who didn't know the name Giorgio Mayer, now you know something, and um, you will get uh, even more curious. We don't have a drum set, but we have a um, a box, <laughs> very nice box, that makes some sound and um, you will hear Jojo play in a second. Um, the ears, you have to have good ears as a musician, that's essential, and obviously you have great ears and, well, <laughs> and you have the tools to make your musical ideas audible on drums and other instruments. So I'm curious um, how you perceive music, how you hear what you hear. And, and so I thought I bring a tune from, from your own band Nerve and we have a listen and yeah, Jojo comments on that. Well, um, generally I think I, I use two different approaches which are in a way diametrically opposed. Um, and the hearing kind of follows in a way, you know, one is um, what you refer to as uh, the neurotic approach. Neurotic approach is if you, you, you develop a vision and you pursue the vision with all the technology that you have at, at, at disposal. So you know, it, you hear something and then you go about exactly creating that. That's the neurotic approach, right? But then there's also the schizophrenic approach. The schizophrenic approach is um, uh, more, you're more in touch with your subconscious. Well, for instance, um, the way a schizophrenic approach works is like a Rorschach test works. You know, when you put like ink on the pages of like a book and then you close the book and you open it up and then you look at it and go like, this is like, looks like a butterfly or it looks like a Scorpio, or you look into the clouds and, and you see, oh, this looks like a, a dog with, uh, with a unicorn, mm. you know, and maybe a different person might not see it. So I describe, no, no, see, this is the tail, and this is, so I articulate this idea. So that articulation is like, a, it's a dialogue between my subconscious and my, and my consciousness and my perception. So. Those two approaches, I go back and forth between them, and sometimes uh, I I hear something and I can pursue it, and sometimes I don't hear something. It happens to me like I I, I learn to embrace the schizophrenic approach more because when I was younger, I was very uh, um, more you know how would you say I was more. Uh, perfectionist mm -hmm. I was very neurotic about like how I wanted things to sound and I drove myself crazy and everybody else <laughs> about it 
you know, you know, many times, you know, there was fights in the studio. I said, Jojo, it sounds great. I don't know, I want to do it again. Like, this is great. This take was really good. So this viewpoint that is very helpful when you pursue the neurotic approach, the way you hear this, and it's not quite there yet, you know, but you, you want to really get there, can get in the way of like the bigger truths. Years later, I listened to this and, and, and I hear something that I wasn't able to hear by the time I was actually performing it. So I discover a beauty that was locked off my, by my viewpoint because of my approach to mm -hmm. it. Okay, so when I learned that, I started to always try to step out uh, like a painter that you know you work on some detail you go really close but then you have to step back and like look at the painting and like oh does it still work yes it's nice and you go like you know you make you work on the leaves and you go back and see the composition is good okay so this is the way how the hearing goes into it you know mm -hmm. because just to go like okay i need to be able to hear let's say uh you know odd groupings over triplets or something unusual or over uh, quintuplets, you know, playing a polyrhythmic shapes over, over quintuplets, which our ear, usually in the Western world, cannot pick it up. So you have to work on it in a more neurotic way until you start to understand how those groupings work. But then you, can, you will not make music with this. You will make music with this if you're able to recognize a structure and exploit it. You know, so I start to enjoy this much more now because I, I'm not, you know, I, I, I stopped being perfectionist and I exchanged the, the concept of perfectionism with the concept of clarity. Mm -hmm. So as long as I can get an idea from A to B, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So I'm only concerned with that. But this gives me a lot of space mm -hmm. and that space I can, I can uh, use when I hear things and that other people might not even notice. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, I can make art out of this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like walking around and I can pick up things on the streets and what nobody else knows and I can see, oh, seeing beauty is also an artistic uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the hearing, I try to sensitize myself so I can actually hear something oh there's something i just have to articulate it and then it would be really great mm -hmm. this is a different type of hearing than like the constructing type of uh, hearing mm -hmm. it, this is the best that i can actually express it or articulate it in 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 words right now you know uh, uh maybe if i think more about it maybe in a year or two i'll be able uh, I'll, I'll be able to to articulate it better but mm -hmm. at this point today this is the closest that i can because it's a very mysterious thing, like inner so hearing, like because this is what we talk. Uh, we talk about inner hearing. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about exterior hearing, mm -hmm. you know. We talk about uh, being able to hear music in your head, which is very important. Uh, you, you cannot play anything if you don't hear anything, or, or you cannot, no, well, you can play, but you cannot express yourself authentically mm -hmm. and honestly if you don't have this ability to hear what, what, what you're playing. So. Mm -hmm. So this is much as I can say about mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how did you learn to get there? How did you learn to get, be a good listener? Well, mostly trial and error. You know, I, 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 I never had a drum teacher, so I'm, I'm, I'm a self-taught, which essentially means that I, at some point, I made pretty much every mistake that you can make. And I, I, I slipped many times and I, 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 I ran into obstacles and I fell and I got hurt. And, but then the important thing is you get up and then you learn from that experience. You, learn, you know, okay, if I do this, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. You know, or it's not gonna work, it didn't work for some reason, maybe it works again. You know, there's no rules for like that. So you have to develop some sort of like uh, intuition for, for this and uh, I let myself, I'm trying to let myself be led by, by this intuition and, and by the curiosity and not so much by fear or you know, so I, I like to go heads, heads on which, which doesn't mean that I that I live without fear you know mm -hmm. but I'm trying to tackle it in like the right way so it doesn't get in the way in, my, in the way of uh, being able to express myself authentically you know mm -hmm. so learning is trial and error you mm -hmm. know I, I went like okay I, I did this we did this we tried this this worked and this, this, this is not you know mm -hmm.
Can we listen to, to one tune? Of course. To maybe um, Dr. Jones? Yes, Jones. Uh. <laughs> There's a cool part coming soon, yeah. but yeah. was it first the beat, the rhythm, or first the melody harmony? You know, I stopped. I can't. I don't remember actually. And the reason why I don't remember is because I uh, I don't try to come up with music in, uh, in a conservative or traditional way mm -hmm. because I'm reaching for unconservative and new music. So you you cannot use old solutions for new problems. Mm -hmm. So the way we work on music with Nerve is sometimes it's like this, sometimes it's like that. Exactly what I what I told you before. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, I could do something like sometimes it's an accident that like triggers an idea. You know, I could just go like, uh, you know, I have a really recording thing. I just could go like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then we'll j let's listen what that sounds like. Oh, uh, let's do it a little bit longer. I'm sorry. Okay, another one. Okay, just trying. So like like this is how we could come up with with something with like nerve so I would go like uh, <coughs> okay now this is what that sounds like okay let's try again okay let's try, listen again okay I already hear a rhythm in this okay now this rhythm it's a, it has a certain shape. It might be, you know, so sort of, okay, where does the beats fall? It's like, you know, you could really go anal about it. Say, okay, this is kind of like a twin, uh, a, a triplet, but pushes into like a quintuplet feel. Or you can go mathematic about it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go mathematic about it, whatever you're going to do is going to sound mathematic. So I'm trying to internalize the basic shape of this. And the feel, and well, many times when we work with like nerve, we just experiment with those type of accidents. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would play something I don't didn't intend to play, and then I go like, okay, oh, this sounded weird, and I try to play exactly the same thing. So it's not legitimate, really. It's not like, oh wait a minute, this is kind of like uh, kind of like the J Dilla uh, concept, really. I mean, it's not really something new. Uh, we try to embrace those type of opportunities. So. Many times we come up with just something. It might be something stupid like this. Sometimes it could be, actually it could be a drum beat. You know, it could be, okay, I, I know this drum beat. Certainly with Dr. Jo Jones, it was not a drum beat. I think Dr. Jones came out of a jam. Mm -hmm. I think it was something that we recorded live because I record everything live. I, uh, we, we travel with our own uh, um, desk. Mm -hmm which is also another company that I endorse, uh, which is Allen and Heath. Mm -hmm. So we, we travel with that. It's a part of our gear, like my snare drum, like the synthesizer. We travel with our own uh, front of the house desk and uh, our engineer is a part of our band. So he records everything, even the sound check. So how many times you get out of the car, you're in a different zone, you know, you play a little bit and sometimes at the sound checks, really good stuff happens. Oh, we played something at the sound check, really great. How many times did this happen? And now I said, like, okay, we can listen back to it. And I think Dr. Jones came out of an idea like that. Okay. You know, so some, it might be sometimes it's like a bass line, sometimes it's a keyboard player has like an idea, but sometimes it just comes, it comes out of our subconscious and we, we capture it, we listen back to it and we, we, we create a, a palette with it okay and those things turn into songs eventually okay 
Can I just play a yes. little bit more? Because yes. there's something very cool happening on the drums. <laughs> That was an accident too? No. Oh no. What was it? it was like, well, um, essentially uh, I played odd groupings over triple pulse. Right? So it's something very, uh, you know, um, you just have to hear on this tempo. Okay, if we have the triple pulse, it would be... Okay, so you can play all groupings over this, it could be five. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. something like that. So it goes over, over the ball line. If I take everything out, I don't know this bass so it was somewhere a line along like a triple pulse. Okay. Sometimes it's a quintuplet, sometimes mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a septuplet. But I think that was, that particular one was, I think it sounded like a triplet. Uh, we'd have to listen to it again, but I think it was a triplet. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, uh, the only unusual thing is that uh, it's, or, uh, not that unusual anymore, but, uh, but it's, it goes over the bar line of an of a, of a odd grouping over a pulse of triplets. Mm -hmm. So you fill the space with that? You didn't... Well, you always fill the space with something. Yeah, <laughs> if you, that, that's if right. you play. <laughs> but did you plan? Did you plan that? Did you? Uh, no, no, no. Those things, uh, no. Uh, I hardly ever, when I play these days, I know unless it's a part of the composition. I don't. No, or, or you know, sometimes a drum fill is a part of the composition. Yeah. It's kind of like a. But on, unless if it's that, uh, I, I improvise. Uh, okay. I think, as a matter of fact, you know, what we're talking about, you know, you asked me about my, my strength, and, and I think I'm getting, I'm getting better as an improviser. Uh, mm -hmm. And, <laughs> you know, uh, so those things happen, um, and sometimes they're good, you know, that I'm glad that I did it, you know, but uh, they, they come to me, and then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm glad I did that, you know. It sounds so strange that you get better as an improviser because I hear um, many, many years ago at a clinic you said um, you don't like playing licks or sound like you play licks. Yeah, yeah. So I thought I'm that's what you do, improvise. Just. Well, yes, I mean, ultimately that's where I want to go because I think there's a strength in being honest. Mm. I think there's a strength in being honest. I think some people can feel it. You know, of course, if you have chops, you know, you can pretend uh, to be anything or it can be cocky or, or impress people because I know the tricks, you know, I know what to do to go, ah, blah, 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 and it was, oh, okay, you know, but um, I realized that I didn't really enjoy that so much, you know, I really more, I want to be a part of the, of the adventure and I want to, and I want to, be able to enjoy that adventure as much as the audience does so it's a bit risky and you know and and there's times where I catapult myself into a world of shit you know but I think that's the way I choose to play you know I, I always choose honesty and I choose freedom over safety I would say mm -hmm. and maybe this is also the reason why I play mostly with my own band because that's the place where I can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can really do that when you play with, you know, a famous R&B or pop per, uh, singer, you mm -hmm. know, then, you know, you're required to do certain things and serve the music, which is totally le legitimate. Mm -hmm. But uh, I choose the adventure. I choose the, the unknown. Mm -hmm. And that's why you who know Jojo probably like him, um, I guess. Um, so that's that's um, been very enlightening and um, deep at some point. I have to to watch this to to understand it fully. <laughs> But uh, thank you so much for oh, your no time. Uh, okay. There's lots more of uh, Jojo. Um, for example, his new um, documentary, Changing yeah, Time. Yeah, there's, there's a documentary that uh, Swiss Television produced on me and. Uh, It was directed by uh, uh, a young director who's actually also a drummer. And this is how I met. His name is uh, Alexis Am Amitrigala. 
And oddly enough, the cameraman was also a drummer. The person that did the sound was a drummer. And uh, there's a lot of drummers in there. So we all, like, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a personal portrait, but essentially it, it tries to capture uh, the time that we live in, which is changing, and how we change, and how to play the drums, how we change, how li our life is changing, and what we can do as artists that have a concern, we're going culturally forward in a time that technologically moves forward, but culturally moves backwards. So yeah, essentially the movie is about that. Mm -hmm. you know? Sounds interesting. Yeah, I think it came out really nice. Yeah. Can only people in Germany, Switzerland, Austria see it? No. Well, the um, the movie will be online. There's there's this, a Swiss version, there's an international version because I you know it's both I speak German and I speak uh, English. And the Swiss version, the English uh, Poland is subtitles, and the inter international version, the this the German stuff is like mm -hmm. subtitles. So it's going to take a little bit of like a bit more time for the international version to, to be online, but uh, it's going to be online. Yeah, Yeah. check that and check uh, Jojo's website, jojomayer.com. And uh, there's a YouTube channel, there's Facebook. Um, I'll put all the links uh, below. Thank you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, try to see him live. He's a uh, very unique, original, and honest drummer. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you for watching, and hopefully, see you soon. Bye.